All right, here's the last question before we get on to the cooking demo. And it's a perfect one because it is about food. It's from Sandy. And she says that she's very excited to have you on the show. She says, I hear many plant-based doctors give an example of what they consider the ideal day of eating to look like. Many of these opinions differ regarding including overt fats, volumes of food, starch sources, grazing versus solid meals. Can you please give us your version of an ideal day including approximate volumes that you would consider minimums to be. I understand we should move away from weighing and portion control, but just as an idea for those of us who struggle to recognize hunger and fullness signals, and would this day include eating an omega-3 source of fat, and would you favor legumes over whole grains or potatoes? I would love to hear this from the plant-based king himself. So a lot of of issues there, but I, I can tell you this, that I believe that for people trying, let's just talk about people trying to lose or maintain weight, not trying to gain weight. So people are trying to lose or maintain weight. I believe that an eight hour feeding window may have an advantage over you know, eating all day long and all night long. And that would mean you'd get a 16 hour fast every day. So that means you need to stop eating three to four hours before you go to bed and still go to bed hopefully at a nice early hour and not stay up all night long. And then delay breakfast until you've had a chance to do some exercise in the morning, because it turns out after fasting for 12 to 16 hours, that you'll burn disproportionately more fat with your exercise. So the idea is don't eat three to four hours before you go to bed, delay breakfast, do a little exercise in the morning, and then have three meals. And the reason we talk about generally having three meals is because if you fill up the stomach with these low density foods, you get somewhere around five to 700 calories in there. And, And most people need somewhere between around 2000 calories a day, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, but that means you have to fill up the feeding bag two or three times a day in order to get enough calories in. We'd recommend that you eat as much salad and steamed vegetables as you can with enough complex carbohydrates so you don't get too skinny. Now they might be starchy vegetables, they might be grains, they might be uh, beans or legumes, depending on, you know, if you're trying, if you have blood sugar related issues, you might favor more beans just because they have a lower glycemic response than you would the grains, but, you know, generally grains, legumes, starchy vegetables, uh, raw and cooked vegetables, uh, a few pieces of whole fruit. And then you may use, uh, assuming you don't have food triggers or whatever, you can use an ounce of raw nuts or seeds or or, um, equivalent higher fat, more concentrated foods. Um, We're going to supplement a a thousand milligrams, uh, a thousand micrograms of methylcobalamin a day for as a B12 source. If you don't get out in the sun enough to maintain normal D levels, we may supplement vitamin D. Uh, We'll include maybe once a week some sea vegetables to make sure your iodine is taken care of, and that should really get you the quantity and quality nutrients you need. You're going to get about 10% of your calories from protein, somewhere around 15 to 18% of calories from fat, and the balance is going to be complex carbohydrates. Now, in terms of quantity, it depends on you and how much calories you burn. For example, I play two uh, hours, four times a week of full court basketball. I'm going to burn a lot more calories than somebody that doesn't do that type of vigorous exercise. So I'm going to eat more volume of food than somebody that's more passive. So you have to regulate the quantity based on the needs. Now, how can you tell? Well, if you're maintaining optimum weight, you're probably doing pretty well. If you're too skinny, you might need to eat more or digest better. If you're overweight, you need to reduce the, the concentrated foods until you lose weight down to your optimum weight. And if you're a woman, you should expect to lose two pounds a week. If you're a man, three pounds a week. Wow. So what do I do is I get up, I have some, usually some type of complex carbohydrate like oatmeal or equivalent fresh fruit and greens, and perhaps a few cashews or a few walnuts or something of that nature. And when I say a few, I mean a few, less than an ounce. Um, at lunch, and dinner, large vegetable salad. You know you have enough salad if everybody around you goes, oh my gosh, you're not gonna eat all that, are you? And they react with shock and awe. If they don't react with shock and awe, you didn't get a big enough bowl. So go get yourself a bucket. And then you wanna have steamed vegetables and you don't have to weigh it, but it it should look like, you know, it would feed the whole room basically. And then you have a more moderate or controlled portion of more concentrated. Maybe you have a baked potato, or you have some squash, or you have some rice, or you have some beans, whatever it is. And, and if you're still hungry, that's okay. You start over and have another pound of salad. <laughs> and you do that lunch and dinner, you maybe have, uh, you know, if maybe you switch breakfast for dinner one day, whatever your thing, it doesn't matter that much, but keep that feeding window tight so that you don't overeat. And once you get to optimum weight, 
then you have to take a look and say, am I able to maintain my optimum weight? Sometimes it's a struggle. People start, they get thinner than they want to be. And so maybe they have to, you know, instead of having rice, maybe they have a little rice pasta or something, you know, they increase the caloric density so that they're able to get enough food in. With kids, you're mostly just trying to shove them so full of good stuff, there's no room for the stuff they're going to get it from their federally subsidized school lunch program. Want to talk a little bit about the dinner that you are going to show the people in a few minutes? Oh, well, we, we, on, uh, I make stuff that I can make, which is simple stuff. And I, we made a big uh, salad base. I think we showed how we do that. And I use that glass Tupperware container so I can make a big base that'll last for a couple, three days. And that would have lettuce, celery, cucumbers, uh, red peppers. And then we'll fresh chop some tomatoes, avocado, pumpkin seed, and I think, I don't know if we use seaweed, sometimes we'll put a little fresh seaweed on there, whatever. And then we have steamed vegetables, whatever's in season. We have a garden, so we're able to pull stuff out or that's uh, fresh and available. And I think we did some broccoli and bok choy, and I'm not sure exactly what was in the meal last week. Um, and then I made a um, fresh tomato sauce with fresh tomatoes from the garden. We had um, leek, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, vegetable stock, um, spinach, shiitake mushrooms, which we love. And we just, and fresh, you know, fresh tomatoes and cook. And also I used a jar of Well Your World's salt-free tomato sauce. And so we, we cooked that down and then had um, some rice noodles, uh, pasta that we put the sauce over. So we had spaghetti, steamed vegetables and salad. And that's a very traditional and typical type of meal that we make for our Sunday family dinner. Well, great. I thank you for doing that. And I want to thank you for answering all these questions. And I hope you'll come back as soon as possible. And if somebody didn't get their question answered, AJ, they know they can contact me uh, through healthpromoting.com. If they fill out the registration forms, we offer a free phone conversation with me. I'll try, try my best to answer the questions or refer to somebody that can help them uh, get a definitive response to their concerns. Great. Thanks so much. It's so great catching up with you, Dr. Goldhammer.